everyone welcome back to the homestead i'm in the greenhouse again it is actually a little bit warmer this week last week was super cold we had rain and icicles and uh, it was just very cold the children had a lot of fun outside playing even through the cold me not so much i like to be in where it's warm <laughs> Uh, so it's not too bad in the greenhouse right now. So I'm going to do another Q&A video. The questions that I'm answering today are actually from last year's November Q&A. We got so many questions on our community page there that uh, we just have not been able to work through them all yet. So I'm going to answer about a dozen more questions off of that community post today. And then I believe we will still have at least one more video to complete all of those questions. We've got quite a variety of questions to answer today and please stay tuned to the end of the video for some thank yous. We've been blessed with some more gifts and we want to give some thank yous at the end of the video today. So I'll just jump right in. Bubblegum and lip gloss wants to know, uh, do you ever have time to read and if so what are some of your favorite books? I honestly do not have a lot of time to read and when I do uh, my first choice is the Bible but I do get little bits of time here and there as well to read mostly just informational and then of course I read to the children when I can I've read um, some really great books to them in the past some of the favorites that I've read to them are Patricia's St. John books she's got quite a collection those are all really good 10 Peas in a Pod is fantastic if you haven't read that. The Grandma's Attic series is really fun. For some of the older children we've read a lot of the Chuck Black series. And then of course Little House on the Prairie books by Laura Ingalls Wilder. The whole series is really fun. So other than the Bible and reading to the children I've got some go-to books that are really fun that are mostly just for enjoyment reference. They're not novels and they're related a lot to gardening and homesteading and herbs and things. So in no particular order at all, I'll just run through some of the ones that I grab the most often. Charles Dowding's Veg Journal, Vegetables Love Flowers by Lisa Mason Ziegler, Monty Don's The Complete Gardener, Lasagna Gardening by Patricia Lanza, in Bloom by Claire Nolan, absolutely beautiful book. Perennial Combinations by C. Colston Burrell. Essential Oils, Ancient Medicine by Axe, Bollinger, and Rubin. Tasha Tudor's Garden by Tova Martin, super sweet book, really enjoyable. A great reference um, is the new complete book of self-sufficiency by John Seymour. Wow, is that packed full of all kinds of great visual and written information. It's just wonderful. And The Herb Bible by Jenny Harding. And there are many, many other fantastic books out there. I'm sure many of you have got some great suggestions. So if you've got some books that are your favorite top picks that you would love to recommend here, please do so in the comments below. All right, next question is from Cheryl. Do you get to see your extended family very often? Not very often, unfortunately. Uh, my parents do try and come out at least once every two years. They, they live in California, uh, but they have a travel trailer, so they try and come out for a pretty good long time, um, once every two years or so. Uh, and then Kip has a sister who tries to come out once every two years as well. But other than that, that's really that's really it. So we really miss our family. We try and stay connected the best we can. We're still really happy to be here and we keep busy and we love them from afar. <laughs> and then Cheryl also wants to know how we, how we found our land and if we had our land before we moved from our previous location. We found our land after we had already moved. So we lived in Alaska and we were blessed to be able to park our travel trailer on some friend's land here in Missouri. And then we were able to look at properties from there, which was really a blessing. Uh, we found our land using a realtor and it's prayer, really. Kip really liked the, the live water on this property. That's kind of what sold it for him. I had had a dream or just a picture in my mind, I don't remember, about running through the pasture with my children when we found our land. And when we came to look at this land, we were about to leave. And right before we leave, the kids were like, hey, can we run across the pasture before we go? Kip was like, yeah, sure. So I ran across the pasture with the children and then realized afterwards that that had already happened in my mind through a, through a dream revision. Um, 
it doesn't really matter, but it was kind of confirmation for me that this was the land for us. All right, Jessica wants to know our dental routine and products that we use or, and any other hygiene products. She's looking for chemical-free alternatives. Uh, so for toothpaste, for years we just used natural toothpaste that we got at Trader Joe's. Then I tried making some different homemade ones and we have pretty much for the past 10 years settled on using homemade MCT oil toothpaste, if you will. <laughs> it's very different from toothpaste, but we've gotten used to it and it's very simple. You just use MCT oil and put a few drops of essential oil of choice. We like spearmint and clove. And then I put it in little dropper bottles or spray bottles and you can either spray or drop it onto the toothbrush and it works really well. Um, we also use coconut oil and do what's called oil pulling when needed. So if anyone's struggling with maybe a little bit of a sore tooth or um, just really wanting to clean out the mouth better if they've been sick or something, uh, you just take a little bit of coconut oil on a spoon and swish it in your mouth like you would with mouthwash for five, 10 minutes and then spit it out. I try to check all the children's teeth regularly for any sign of cavities. Uh, thankfully, we've had no issues with that. I really believe that having a healthy diet is important for healthy teeth. So preventative measures um, are really important to us. If there are ever any plaque issues, we have dental tools that we can use to remove the plaque if need be. And if there is ever a serious issue, we of course will take our children to the dentist or orthodontist if need be, but thankfully we've had no dental issues to this point, which is a huge blessing. Other hygiene products are pretty simple. I get from Vitacost, whatever unscented organic baby things that I can find. So baby shampoo and wash. I get baby unscented liquid Castile that we use for uh, mixing with water for a foaming hand soap. So we just have a little foaming bottle that we use and that's how we wash our hands. I get also just a natural dish soap from Vitacost that I use. I like Charlie's soap for laundry. If we need moisturizer, we use things like pure aloe vera gel or I make my own healing hydrating oil that I've shared before. All right, Marlene has a really tough question. She wants to know um, some advice for parenting teens, specifically dealing with anger and bad attitudes. Honestly, I'm going to hand this question over to my husband, Kip. I don't really have a whole lot of great advice for this one. Our teenagers have never given us issues with anger or bad attitudes. Uh, maybe that's unusual, but to me it's just normal. Uh, they have been trained from a very young age to be respectful and kind and uh, sure, they get upset once in a while, but in their anger, they know that they're not supposed to sin, and so they'll just often go kind of be by themselves for a little bit until they get past the anger, and then they come back and deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. All right, love. So what advice would you give to parents who have teens that are struggling with anger and bad attitudes? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough thing. Super tough. <laughs> yeah, and I mean... As parents, you know, if you're not engaged, you know, from, from the get, that's a tough thing because seeing the bad attitudes and things like that, those are, those are battles. So you can fight those battles all one by one, you know, those little battles, but there is a war that's raging within each child. And that's, the war is their hearts. Mm -hmm. And as parents, that's the war. The war is to win their hearts. That's the true battle. So if we engage with our children at the youngest age possible and win their hearts so that they know that they know that they know that you love them, then they can know that they know that they know that they are loved by a Heavenly Father. So if you can win their hearts, so by that I mean get on their level, talk to them, get them to the point with you where they want to communicate with you where they want to share their struggles with you. They want to share their heartaches with you and all that. So then when you see behavioral issues, if you've won their heart, when you see behavioral issues, then you can fight that battle and win that battle. But otherwise, if you don't win the war of winning their hearts, then you can fight all those battles, but they just come back. Yeah. Then you, you can't really make headway. Yeah. So that's what I would encourage you to do as parents, is really engage with your children. Understand their love language. Understand the things that you do and say that really makes them feel loved. And 
win that war. Win their hearts. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. All right, next question is from Flo. She wants to know if we're gonna be selling our whatever you do, do it with your whole heart t-shirts again. We actually are selling them from our website and we are working on getting them available here on YouTube again as well. The website has organic, which is a little more expensive. And then here on YouTube, we're working on getting the store set up again with uh, non-organic, which will be a little bit less expensive. Um, you can have a choice that way. All right, Hendrix Homesteading wants to know how I spend time outside when I've got little, little ones. She has a two-year-old and a 13-month-old. Wow. Um, wants to know how to make that easier and when um, can they be outside alone. This really depends on your situation. If you're able to get them both down for a nap and have some kind of monitor, so if they wake up you can run back inside, uh, then maybe you can go outside depending on how far away you need to go from the house. Uh, a lot of people use baby carriers. I always had a hard time with that and I was blessed to have older children um, before I started getting into gardening much so the older children would help out. Um, finding a friend or family member to help watch them so you can get out there and do what you need to do once in a while could could help. Hey guys, I'm going to help my mom out with this question because I help with the littles a lot. So something that's helped us is to find an area close to where we're working and set up fun things for the littles. Here's some ideas. Littles love water. So when it's warm out, you can have a kiddie pool and you can have, have little watering pitchers to help water. You can have spray bottles so they can spray each other or the plants. Any sort of containers with water in it, they love the water. They also love dirt. So you can use that same kiddie pool to mix your garden soil in it and give them a little bit. You can give them little play shovels and things like that. Yeah, and they love to help mix your garden soil mixtures, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the little ones loved that last year. Another idea is to give them a bunch of old kitchen items so they can do play cooking. Another idea is to give them a bunch of boxes to play with and to make little forts with and do stuff with. So even just a little patch of mud and rocks and sticks can entertain little ones for a while. Even one and two year olds can help in the garden. They love to play with the seeds and help plant the seeds. Yeah, especially the bigger seeds, huh? <laughs> and they can get into areas that big people can't get to so easily. So they can like walk up on the bed sometimes and not disturb the soil because they're so little. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What else can they help with in the garden? They can help with planting plants, I guess. Yeah, sometimes plants, sometimes pulling weeds like in the pathways. Yeah, they also like to fill the pots with dirt and rocks in the bottom if you're doing that. Yeah, so if you're doing a potting project, you can give them some of their own pots and let them fill them up and plant weeds in them or whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for those ideas, Esther. Hopefully that's helpful to our viewers. Okay, I've got some little ones that join me here. They're going to try and be quiet. <laughs> try and finish this question here from Hendrix Homesteading. Uh, try and remember that they're only little little like that for a short time. Uh, when I had little little ones like that I often really scaled back on my outside stuff. We shrunk our garden goals for the year, that sort of thing, so that I could just spend more time with them when they're really little. So yeah, they'll grow up so so fast and then soon your two-year-old and 13 month old will probably be the ones helping you with the newborn baby, helping to hold and care for them so you can go out and do a little bit of outside stuff once in a while. As far as when they can go outside alone, that's going to totally depend on your situation. For us, where we live, we're still in a construction zone and there's dangerous things around so we don't really let little ones go out alone until maybe four or five years old and, and even then it's with supervision close by through a window and then we also have predators and things in our woods right close by so we have to be careful even up to the age of 10 and 11 we don't allow them to go like to our spring alone until we train them to know what to look for we have to be careful where we're at just because of our circumstance oh boy the wind <laughs> Do you hear that noisy wind? It's rattling our greenhouse. Uh, you may find where you're at, you don't have as many dangers, and you can set up a really safe place and just kind of watch from a window and stay close by so that little ones can be outside while you're doing dishes or that sort of thing. All right, next question. Anika wants to know what kind of Bible we use 
and where to get it. Uh, most often we use what's called the proper names version of the KJV. Uh, then we also have used Tree of Life, we've used the scriptures, and I believe they're all available on Amazon. She also wanted to know about books for traditional remedies and herbs. I believe I shared some book recommendations in our first Q&A video in November of last year. All right, Janet wants to know if I can explain why I don't can and the benefits of eating in season. I do can a little bit, but not much. The biggest two reasons I don't can are one, often canning uh, diminishes the nutrition of the food. And two, I just don't have time to can most of the time. <laughs> this season of my life is very busy. Uh, so the things that I do can, because some of the nutrition is increased through the heating canning process, is tomatoes and berries. Uh, so I like to make jams and jellies. And if I have extra tomatoes, sometimes I will can the tomatoes. Uh, that's about it though. And the reason we really like to eat in season is because the fresher your food is, the more nutritious it is. And then I just think it's good for our bodies to not get stuck in a rut with the same kinds of food, but to kind of alternate through the year, through the seasons with different varieties of food. And I really believe that that helps nourish our bodies. We get just a more diverse diet that way. So yeah, for health reasons, I think it's good to eat in season. And it's just kind of fun too. Go without certain foods for a period of time so that then when you have them again, then you just really appreciate them that much more. Abby's doing a good job here watering my seedlings. I finally got to start our first seeds for the year, mostly onions, lettuce, and cabbage, doing some testing of old seed, that sort of thing. Um, so she's loving it. <laughs> Mommy to Malachi wants to know, can you explain what it means to cure vegetables? Uh, so curing vegetables is really just a kind of drying process so that the outer skins um, harden up, dry a little bit, and that helps to preserve whatever is inside. I just really keep it simple. I try to cure our vegetables, uh, basically dry them out in an area that's not in the direct sun so kind of a shady area that can get some good airflow and it just like for potatoes it helps to dry out their skin a little bit before you pack them away that way they store longer and mommy to malachi also wanted to know if i'm going to the torah sisters retreat in michigan this may i am not we have fellowship with other families and friends right here where we live and sorry Sorry about the noise, guys. The wind is making our greenhouse make interesting noises. <laughs> I don't typically travel uh, other places for fellowship. At this point in our lives, we just really feel like the Father wants us to be where he's put us and to go deep with the people right here close to us. And then we also have all of you <laughs> that we share our lives with as well. So I hope you enjoy that retreat though. Okay, and the last question for today is from Bladis. I hope I said that right wants to know if we're planning on having any more children. Uh, we are not preventing having children. We decided before we had our first child that we were no longer going to prevent having children. We decided to just totally leave it up to the Heavenly Father, the creator of all life, who truly knows better than us how many children we should have. And so that's what we're still doing. I am 46. Uh, so I don't know that I will have any more children. It's not very likely, but we'll see. And Bladis also wanted to know, do we go to church or congregate at home? Simply put, we believe that we are the church, not that we go to church. So the church is the people, not a building. Years ago, we tried to get away from using that terminology because we really believe it's important that people who believe in Messiah understand that they themselves, when they come together, they're the church and it has nothing to do with a building. Uh, so we meet in homes with the church and we've done that for years, more than 20 years now. We've been meeting with the church in homes. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks for joining me for this Q&A. We have enough questions for at least one, maybe two more videos. Uh, to finish that list that was started in November of last year. It's been really fun answering your questions. Thank you to all those who submitted them. And now we've got a bunch of thank yous to give. Thank you for the pets. Yeah, you got four pairs. Two, you're holding two. 
She's got some on that match wonderful with her dress. She picked them out. And then you already wore a pair. So it's in the dirty clothes, huh? Isn't that fun? Yeah. Thank you for the books. Yeah, it looks like some fun new books to read to you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the socks, the tinnies, and the pants. Yeah, so let's see. You got some wool socks there. Mm -hmm. Where's the tinnies? Tennies and he's wearing the pants already, guys. <laughs> Thank you for the skirts. Yeah, she got two new skirts. And what else did you get? And thank you to Roxy for the letter, seeds, and recipe. Yeah, beautiful letter with some pretty drawings and a handwritten recipe and seeds mm -hmm. for Mexican sunflowers. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this pair of pants and a new tape measure. Yeah, that's a nice one. I tested it out. It works great. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and thank you to Scarlett for this nice corduroy skirt. It's a perfect color and I love corduroy. I haven't tried it on yet, but it looks like it's going to fit perfect. So thank you, Scarlett. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much to our patrons who make these videos possible. We love you guys. Until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart.